Good morning. Thank you for joining me today for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Uh, today is January 30th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Book of Mormon. I almost said New Testament. Okay. And he said unto me, Knowest thou the condescension of God? And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. First Nephi chapter 11, verses 16 through 17. Nephi was here asked the question of the ages, not unlike the query posed some 600 years later by the master himself, what think ye of Christ? Nephi was a righteous man, a son of God, who had learned many things concerning the condescension of God. In his humility, however, he delivered a sweet concession that he did not know all things and offered to us a principle that will, that will see us through the perils and poignant difficulties of life, the simple but profound truth that God loves his children. We need not have all the answers. We need not understand the reasons for this tragedy or that trauma. Until the Lord sees fit to reveal all things, it is sufficient to know that God is indeed our Father in heaven, that he is aware of us, that he orchestrates the events of our lives, and that his love and tender regard for us is perfect and infinite. Okay, um, today is 1st Nephi chapter 17, and it was a long chapter. I, I, I should have gotten up earlier, had I known it was 55 verses. But in this, um, they travel in the wilderness until they come to the sea, and then the Lord tells Nephi to get up and go to the mountain and he tells him to construct a ship he shows him how to build it and Nephi says where shall I go that I might find ore I'm sure there was some other conversation there but this is the point that he wanted to make that he wasn't gonna murmur he wasn't gonna doubt he was just gonna go okay well the first thing I need is tools so where can I find ore where can I find the materials I need to build the things I need to build the things I need uh, is basically how it goes. And then um, his brothers are like, oh my goodness, you can build a ship. And they recount how Lehi is a visionary man, how he led them out and how they could have enjoyed their possessions a little bit longer before Jerusalem was destroyed. And uh, you're just like dad. And then of course, Nephi recounts the whole story of Israel um, leaving Egypt and them being disobedient and not hearkening to the word of the Lord and long chapter, lots of stuff being told in there. Um, and I was really looking for something that exemplified hope. Um, and the one I settled on was verse 50. And I said unto them, if God had commanded me to do all things, I could do them. If he should command me that I should say unto this water, be thou earth, it should be earth. And if I should say it, it would be done. And I just wrote, Nephi has all hope in the Lord, <clears throat> doubting nothing at all. Um, and, and that's just it. All of his hope. He has such faith, such hope that he's like, I can do anything. If the Lord told me to do anything, I could do it. End of story, period. All his hope is in the Lord. All of his hope for himself is in the Lord. Not like, okay, well, I can provide for my family. It's, where does the Lord send me to provide for my family? So. Sometimes I feel like he's too good of an example. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's get into our commentary. Hmm. Evidence, 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 evidence. Okay. 
talking about them being past feeling. If our hearts are hardened, we cannot feel the Spirit. Conversely, if we be, if we come before the Lord with softened hearts, uh, then we are blessed to feel the Spirit and receive divine guidance for our lives. Nephi reminds his brothers of the following. The Lord had led the Israelites out of Egypt to safety. The Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea. Manna was provided for the Israelites' food. Water was given to them out of a rock. And the Lord led them day and night. The Israelites still hardened their hearts and reviled against Moses. The Israelites eventually became very wicked, and the Lord said that Jerusalem would be destroyed. Hence the order that Lehi should leave Jerusalem. The Lord favors the righteous, but will destroy the wicked. Nephi appeals to Laman and Lemuel to remember the Lord, but their hearts are past feeling. This is surely a danger sign in the spiritual well-being of any person. If people cannot feel the promptings of the Spirit, they are left to their fallen state, unable to receive the blessings of the Lord. Um, that's kind of it. It's, it's all evidences in this one, but that's fine. It could be a short chapter today. Okay. So let's close out the come follow me portion of this video with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 30th and this one is by Chico and Oka, Okazaki being savior centered. The savior calls us to do things, to come to him and to open the door to our hearts and let him come to us. The apostle Paul struggling for words to express how complete our access is says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Think of the power and joy that come into our lives when we face our days and our nights with Jesus beside us. We can deal with adversity because Christ has been there before us, experiencing all that we experience and being with us in our trials. We can make wise choices and set good priorities, knowing that our no is an important that our no is as important as our yes when he is with us. If we will let him, he will accompany us daily and hourly instead of being stuck in the back room waiting patiently until we can snatch a few minutes to dash back and be with him. We can be free of guilt because he does not condemn us. On the contrary, he is our advocate. He stands ready, knocking and calling, ready to respond to the three-second prayer of our heart as well as to the longer pleadings on our knees. He is ready to heal us and make us whole. He desires our happiness and promises us his joy. May we be Savior-centered, knowing that we are beloved of him. The part in here that I like, uh, or that really stood out to me, is when um, he's, he, she, is talking about the Lord being stuck in the back room. And he's waiting patiently for us to steal a few moments that we can be with him. That's really what it feels like sometimes during my day is that I like I'm doing stuff, I'm doing stuff. And then like when I can have a minute to turn my thoughts to him or something of that nature, then, you know, that's really what it feels like is sometimes like he's just waiting in the back room, waiting for me to. But it's me who puts him there. That's the thing. He doesn't put himself there. I do. Okay. Um, let's get into our general conference challenge portion of the video. Um, in my reading last night of the Book of Mormon, uh, there were no prayers in that. It was um, second, nope, first Nephi chapter two, verses 18 to the end, and then uh, into verse 17 of chapter three. And there wasn't anything there that I, it was, uh, Lehi sending his sons back to Jerusalem. So there wasn't anything there 
that I could really pull out for prayer. Um, these these last three days of January are kind of falling a little bit short on prayer, but sometimes that happens. Okay, um, and tomorrow we're going to discuss. I believe this is correct. Uh, Promptings of the Spirit, Elder Gary E. Stevenson. I'm going to try to read this one today because tomorrow we discuss our general conference talk and this one is by Elder Gary E. Stevenson. So that's the one we're going to discuss tomorrow. I'm going to try to read it today. Oh, January's almost over. Goodness me how it flies by. Um, that's all I have for today. All right. That was 1 Nephi chapter 17, and tomorrow we do chapter 18. We will see you then. Have a great day.